In this video, we will see how general relativity explains the deflection of light rays due to gravity, and in particular, for simplicity, we'll consider a light ray deflected by the sun. Let's start by sketching the situation that we have. So we have a star somewhere in space-time, and then this star emits some light rays. And in particular, we will consider the trajectory of a light ray, and for simplicity, we will assume this uh, trajectory to be simply um, a line until it reaches a point which is closest to the sun. So here we have the sun, and then we have a deflection that we are going to sketch as another line, another straight line. Here we have an angle alpha, and then the light ray goes away from the sun in this other direction. So there is some kind of symmetry. And here we have an observer. The observer sees the star in a position different from the actual one. It is an illusory position. So if we extend this line here, the observer will see the star in a different position, which is not the actual one that is here. Now we have to solve this kind of problem. We have to see what is this kind of deflection, how we can calculate this deflection here. And in particular, is the angle alpha. We want to see how gravity affects alpha. In particular, from the sun, we can measure a distance r. So this is r. This is straight, a straight line. And uh, this other length here will be x. So x will be zero at this point, and it can go all the way down to minus infinity. So I'm assuming that this is minus infinity. This is x equal to zero. And similarly, there is some kind of symmetry on the other branch. Here, for example, we might define another coordinate epsilon equal to zero. And then here we have epsilon equal to plus infinity. This distance here between this point closest to the sun, which is represented by a sphere, this distance is b. So we know that r, for example, is equal to the square root of uh, x squared plus uh, b squared. What we need to do is we need to start from the Schwarzschild metric. So I'm going to write down the Schwarzschild metric, ds squared is equal to 1 minus 2gm divided by rc squared, c squared dt squared minus 1 over 1 minus 2 gm divided by c squared r dr squared minus r squared d theta squared minus r squared sine squared theta d phi squared. So I'm using the signature with the uh, signs plus minus minus minus. You can see it from here. So if you neglect the effect of gravity, you see that we get back the Lorentz metric in spherical coordinates, which is characterized by the plus, minus, minus, minus signature. Now, for a light ray, we know that ds is equal to zero. This is very simple, because if we go to a local frame, we can write ds squared equal to c squared dt squared minus dx squared, something like this. If we are moving along the direction of the light ray and we are calling x the direction of motion of the light ray, this is what we can write. And in particular, we also know that the derivative of x with respect to time is equal to the speed of light c. And this is just a constant. It's as if we were in vacuum because we are considering special relativity after all. In a local frame, we can always consider special relativity. But then from here, you can see that this is definitely equal to zero. Another point to consider is that since we are considering straight lines, it is very easy to understand that we can set this equal to zero because we have no variation over theta and over phi. Those angles are not important. We are only concerned with uh, the radial distance r. So these two are the only parts that compose the metric. So we can set ds equal to zero, and when we set ds equal to zero, we can find dr over dt 
in absolute value, which is the speed of light. And in this case, it depends on R. We can see in general that in a non-local frame, the speed of light is not a constant, because if you set the S equal to zero here, you can find that dr over dt can be written as C, the speed of light in vacuum, times 1 minus 2 gm divided by c squared r. Now, the time elapsed from the star to the point located at distance b from the sun, and in particular, I am talking about the time that elapses during this uh, motion here, during this first part of the trajectory, from minus infinity to x equal to zero. The time that elapses during that trajectory can be written as an integral from minus infinity to zero of dx divided by the velocity, which depends on r, and r depends on x, because if you recall, r is simply equal to the square root of x squared plus b squared, here. So r depends on x, and we have a formula for v of r, which is this one. So we can put it into our integral, integral from minus infinity to zero, and then we have dx, we divide by c times 1 minus 2gm divided by c squared r, but r is the square root of b squared plus x squared. So we can write it like this. And then, since c is very large, we can expand, actually, this part of uh, the integrand. So here we have 1 over this quantity in the denominator, right? And we can write the following expansion. So we have 1 over 1 minus x, which is approximately equal to 1 plus x, right? So we can rewrite this as integral from minus infinity to 0 of, we have dx over c, and here we have 1 plus 2 gm divided by c squared, square root of b squared plus x squared like this. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this time, capital T, with respect to B. So I'm assuming that I want to calculate how the time changes if I change B. That's what I want to see. And in particular, I'm taking the derivative along the first part of the trajectory. So let me call this dt db1 because we are taking a look at what happens during this first part of the trajectory here. Then we will see that we will also have another contribution from this second line and also from the third line here. But the third line will be very easy to calculate because it will be exactly symmetric with respect to what's going to happen here in the first line. So this is just the derivative of that integral. So this can be written as integral from minus infinity to zero of minus 2gm divided by c cubed. And then we have b divided by b squared plus x squared to the power of 3 over 2 dx. This can be also written as minus 2gm over b c cubed integral from minus infinity to zero. And now here we can rewrite the integral by changing coordinates, dk over one plus k squared to the power three over two. So I have made a very simple substitution and you can check that you can obtain this expression from this expression here. This integral is quite easy to calculate. So I'm not going to do it here, it is simply equal to 1. So you can calculate it, for example, by setting k equal to the tangent of uh, t, or whatever variable you want. So you can call this u, whatever you want. And you can show that it, it is equal to 1. So the result is minus 2 gm divided by b c cubed. And then we also have another contribution because we have to consider also this part of the trajectory, 
And in particular, in this case, this length here, this length of the trajectory is of the order of B alpha, B times alpha, because alpha will be a small angle and we multiply by B and we get that that length is about B times alpha, approximately B times alpha. But this length is also approximately equal to the speed of light C. We can consider the speed of light in vacuum because we are making an approximation. And then we multiply this by T or delta T, if you want. It's the time that elapses during this second part of the trajectory. And then if we take the derivative of T with respect to B in the second part of the trajectory, this will be approximately equal to alpha over C. And finally, we have something very similar on the third part of the trajectory. So when we go from this point, located at epsilon equal to zero, to this point here, at epsilon equal to infinity, this distance here is assumed to be B for uh, symmetry. And therefore, the change in T with respect to B in the third part will be equal to the change in T with respect to B in the first part. So the total change dT dB will be given by the sum. So we get twice dT dB in the first part plus dT dB in the second part. And for Fermat's principle, this is equal to zero because a light ray minimizes the time to travel from a point A to a point B. So it's a very simple principle that we are using here. And if we set this equal to zero, we get the following equation. So we get minus four gm over bc cubed, and then we get plus dt dB over two, which we obtained here, and that's alpha over c. So we get plus alpha over c, equal to zero. So we get alpha equal to 4 gm over b c squared. And this is the result. And by the way, this capital M here, which was present in the Schwarzschild metric, is the mass of the sun in this case, or it's this mass here, which uh, is uh, warping space-time.